can hear my dog. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Sienna. Sienna, lie down. You don't need to bark at people. No. Shh, shh, shh. I have to wait. Hello there. Um, my name's Catherine and I have tried to make this video four times now and this is the second day as well so things are going great. <laughs> um, I'm doing really well. <laughs> this is the first YouTube video I'm trying to make for this channel. I like books, I like films so I'm gonna talk about them and hopefully find some people who have similar tastes and we can talk about them together. So I thought because we're halfway through the year, I would do my favourite books that I've read in 2023 so far. I think most of them are quite well known, so these aren't going to be new recommendations, but I really enjoyed them and I want to talk about them. I went through my story graph and I forgot so many of the books that I've read at the start of the year, like January to March, I read quite a few and I just have completely forgotten about them. It's like they've been snapped out of my memory. So maybe this hasn't been the best reading year so far that being said i've read some really good ones and i'm just gonna instead of rating them like best to worst or anything i'm just gonna go through them in the order i read them this year uh, and i'm not gonna rate them stars or anything because i've discovered that i have no idea how to rate books and star ratings i have no criteria i literally just finish a book and give them a rating based on how I feel in my heart at that moment and then I come back to it half a year later look at the rating and I'm like does that make sense? I don't know what I'm doing most of the time. So anyway the first book I'm going to talk about is called Legends and Lattes by Travis Baldry. Yeah, I don't have a physical copy of this book because I read it on my Kindle. Um, but on the front cover, the tagline is a novel of high fantasy and low stakes, which is, I think, one of the best taglines for a book I've ever heard because it just, it's one, very memorable, and two, it sums up the vibe of the book completely. It follows a character called Viv, who is an orc barbarian. Um, and she has decided she's retiring from her life as a warrior and is going to open the very first coffee shop in a town called Thun, which I love as a concept. <laughs> the main thing I loved about this book was the characters in it and the kind of found family aspect of it. I love a found family trope. I love when like a ragtag group of characters come together who shouldn't really go together but they end up loving each other and protecting each other and just helping each other out and it's so wholesome. It's probably my favourite trope in fiction. Viv is a great main character and her love interest is great. My favourite character was probably Thimble who joins the coffee shop as the baker and he's really quiet and doesn't say much but he bakes the most yummy goodies and is just so sweet and cute and I love him. The romance aspect of this book is really sweet as well. I really love the romance between Viv and Tandri who is a succubus. I loved how as like Viv as an orc barbarian and Tandri as a succubus they both like deal with their own sort of stereotypes within the world they live in and that's not who they are at all and I love through the romance them kind of getting to know each other and being vulnerable with each other and breaking down the stereotypes and just it's all a very sweet wholesome time. So this is such a cozy read. It's perfect for autumn which is coming up. Um, I think there's the author's got a new book coming out called is it called Bookshops and Bone Dust I want to say and I'll definitely be reading it and it's made me want to read a um, more kind of low stakes fantasy um yeah i really loved it the next book i have bunny by mona awad um this is one of the weirdest books i've ever read but in the best possible way it's like if i was recommending it to someone i'd say it's mean girls meet satan it's unhinged <laughs> this follows samantha heather mckay who's enrolled in a prestigious university and within her course she's part of a writing group with four other girls who have 
formed a clique and kind of excluded her and this clique is super weird they're like weirdly affectionate with each other they all call each other bunny as a term of endearment and uh, they're constantly just fawning over each other and like being supportive but not supporting the main character samantha but this main plot of the story is seeing samantha finally like getting accepted by them but then realizing the horrors of what they're doing and what's happening behind closed doors for this group of girls to achieve creative inspiration it's really good really really good the writing style is so easy to read and so addictive the way the the girls are written as this kind of like one entity is so like off-putting in the best way possible i think i really liked it because it kind of showcases how awful it could be to be someone excluded from a group but specifically in like the creative industries where when you're someone who works in a creative industry you're constantly having to be vulnerable with people and if you're excluded from a group of people that can be so damaging because you're opening yourself up to harm in your most fragile state and um, so it's so unsettling and so scary and i think this book does a really good job at showcasing that. The next book, If We Were Villains by M. L. Rio. This is a dream to read. It's a dark academia book and I hold my hands up. I haven't read that many dark academia books. I read Babel last year and I adored Babel but I think that's really the only dark academia book I've ever read. I've not read Secret History but I do plan on reading it. One of my friends has read it and she loved it um but yeah this one is great that takes place in the past and the present and follows our main character oliver marks who is recounting to a police detective the true events of a crime committed 10 years prior on the day that oliver is released for committing this crime which i think is such a good setup for a book a really good way of telling a story we are the detective when we're reading um, but we're also thrown into this cast of characters. It mainly takes place at another prestigious university on a drama course where a group of, I think it's fourth years, is it third or fourth years? It's their last year of university doing drama and they're just completely immersed in the world of Shakespeare. They live, they breathe it. Um, and it's like, I would say this book is like almost a love letter to Shakespeare as much as it, is, as it is an original work because he's literally on every page of this book like the characters are constantly quoting him referencing him throughout the book they're doing various plays so you have entire scenes dedicated to watching them enact scenes of Shakespeare which relate to the background tensions of the reality of these ca characters like simmering it's like whatever tensions you see in relationships or whatever before the scene unfurls all comes to light within the performance which is so amazing and i think a really great way if you struggle with shakespeare like his language and understanding what's going on this is such a good book for kind of being able to deep dive into um his words more i think I would have loved to have read this in uni or school when I did Shakespeare and just kind of use it as like a second text to kind of help with understanding. I think it would help a lot of people who struggle with it and maybe don't enjoy it as much to enjoy it more. It is pretentious, but it's meant to be pretentious. I don't think it's too much. I think it's absolutely perfect. I just drink my tea while my dog warns people off the house. Sienna. Oh, she can hear another dog outside. That's why. Where was I? The thing I loved about this book especially was how at the start of the novel, the cast of characters have kind of been assigned and embody like various Shakespeare character tropes um, 
but throughout the book and by the end those have completely been upturned have kind of changed roles within the group dynamic and I think that was a really good way of showing how they're coming to their end of university they're going to be moving on to new things their whole life that they've built around them being uprooted and kind of having to reevaluate who you are as a person because we're just constantly evolving and changing and it can be really difficult obviously this is much a very dark interpretation of that theme but it's still there and it is still valid this is another great autumn read halloween especially i think halloween there is like a performance at halloween in this i think they do macbeth maybe um, I can't remember, but it's really good and I highly recommend it. The next book, I think I listened to this on Audible, so I don't have a physical copy of it. This is Happy Place by Emily Henry. I love Emily Henry so much. I think I will read anything she comes out with. I've read every single one of her books since uh, Beach Read. I've not read her young adult stuff, but maybe I will. I am um, follow her religiously. I'm so excited for her next book to come out. What's it called? Funny story. I had it written down right in front of me. But yeah, with Happy Place, I finished it and I loved it and I went online to read reviews on it and it was getting quite a lot of criticism, which I was surprised at. But ultimately I did, I saw the points people were making. I just think I took something else from it, which I will explain. It follows Harriet and Wynne, um, who have been together for so many years but when the book starts they've been broken up for six months and the novel takes place on a holiday with all of these friends where they have to pretend that they're still together because they haven't told them they're not ready to and it kind of forces them to acknowledge where their relationship failed come to terms with that but also they have to face like unresolved feelings that are still there i loved all the characters I, again this was like a found family trope in it definitely so i ate that up i really loved especially when the male love interest i thought he was really sweet and endearing and gave me kind of cowboy vibes which was quite fun i think i mainly loved it so much for the reason why people criticize it a lot i think i'm gonna talk about spoilers here so skip ahead if you don't want to hear Basically, I think people criticise the fact that the main character, Harriet, had, was a, I think she's a surgeon um, and she decides by the end of the book that she doesn't want to pursue this anymore and she pursues her passion project or side hobby or whatever, pottery, and decides to make a career out of that or at least follow that um, and give up medicine. And I think a lot of people just find it unbelievable that someone would commit all this time and money and effort into medicine which is a lot to just give it up but then I think also people were annoyed that she's giving it up for a hobby like pottery which people who do do pottery as a career do it for years and it's a craft that they hone and a skill and something they're truly truly passionate about and work towards and even then they still don't make that much money most of the time or it's really hard to kind of get yourself known to be able to make money so I think that it's just a bit off-putting for some people maybe like this character to just flippantly be like I'm just gonna do this now <laughs> without actually being like no you need to put in the time and effort for that too but and I do see that side of things definitely but I took something way different from her decision to do that I took it as like more in the sense of like yes she did spend all this time money and effort working towards medicine working towards become a surgeon and when she did finally get there it wasn't for her and her whole struggle throughout the book aside from the romance is coming to terms with the fact that she's not happy she feels like a failure for not being happy doing this thing she's scared to give it up because of everything that she's given of herself to do this thing but at the end of the day she has to make the right decision for her 
and the scariest decision to make is to leave something that you've spent all this time and effort and money working towards. I think I just relate to that so much and um, I still don't know who I am. Like I said earlier, we're all just constantly evolving and it's okay to admit that you don't want to do something anymore and to just change change trajectory, change the path you're on. Um, that's what I took from it, which is why I really liked it. I do see the side, other side to it, which pre people criticise it for. I think I just love anything Emily Henry does though, because people, I think, say that if you like beach reads, you'll love book lovers, and if you like people we meet on vacation, you'll like Happy Place, um, and kind of the opposite, you'll dislike the other ones, but I like them all, so. <laughs> I think I'm just a hole for Emily Henry writing. <laughs> the next book I'm going to talk about is very well known. Mistborn book one, The Final Empire by Brandon Sanderson. This is really well known high fantasy and it's the only Sanderson book I've read so far. I will probably read more Sanderson. I really enjoyed this. This is like Ocean's Eleven meets Tolkien. The whole main plot going through is a heist which was so much fun i don't really read heists i don't really watch heists either but i really enjoy it when i do and it follows a group of alamancers who are people who can who have the ability to ingest certain types of metal which then give them powers related to the metal it follows a group of alamancers who have been recruited by one of the main characters kelsier whose ultimate goal is to overthrow the lord ruler who is in charge of this whole empire that's been around for a thousand years. There have been uprisings many times before, but they always fail. And his goal is to get rid of the Lord Ruler. I think he's called the Lord Ruler in this. The thing that I really liked about this book is when you're writing a high fantasy or a fantasy in general, there's a lot of info dumping that I think is inevitable. Um, it has to be done. It's a new world. Like you can't really get around it. But instead of just kind of accepting that there's going to be long paragraphs of kind of boring but necessary details, Sanderson instead utilises the character of Vin in this book, who has only recently discovered that she's an Alamancer, so she knows nothing. So the info dumping is mainly shown specifically about like um, how the metals work and everything through Kelsey or training Vin. So instead of like her just being told how they work we have whole scenes where she's being trained in how to work so it's you're being given the info dumping through an action scene which is a really smart way of doing it and makes it actually engaging and fun to read and the other way i think he does it really well is at the beginning of every chapter you have these like diary entries it doesn't say whose diary it's from but it's like pretty obvious from the get-go it's the diary of the lord ruler which is giving us information on the world and how it works in small snippets throughout and also contributing to one of the overall mysteries of the book which is how this empire came to be and who the lord ruler is which i just think was a really good way of communicating information to the reader as someone who likes to read fantasy romance over just like straight up fantasy I was a bit hesitant I thought I would enjoy it my husband was the one who said I would enjoy it but I thought it would be like a bit of a struggle but it was really accessible really easy to read and there's something for everyone in here like if you like adventure it's got adventure if you like romance it's got romance if you like mystery it's got mystery it's like the romance in it is a small bit of it but it was like enemies to lovers trope basically and it really hooked me in and yeah I think there's something that can hook everyone who wants to go into fantasy into this if you don't read much fantasy I think this is a good one it looks big because it is big which can be intimidating but it's not intimidating once you start the only thing um I will say about it which is not a good or bad thing necessarily, is that the ending was really satisfying for me and it felt like it wrapped up the story well enough that I like haven't been itching to go on to the next book really. So it's like a good thing that I enjoyed the ending but it's not necessarily a good thing that I didn't really want to go straight into the next book. But, you know, 
The next book I'm going to talk about is Reputation by Lex Croucher. This is another Mean Girls-esque book. It's kind of like Mean Girls meets Austin. Very Bridgerton-y vibes as well of kind of being set in a Regency England but with touches of modernity which makes it so fun to watch um, and so much more accessible for a modern audience. There's even like a literal Mean Girls reference at the beginning of one of the chapters. One of the characters addresses the main character and says the line, get in Georgiana, we're going shopping, which I read that and I was like, I'm in. This is the book for me. So the story follows the main character Georgiana Ehlers who has recently moved in with her aunt and uncle and finds herself getting caught up in the debauched upper society of Regency England with this whole cast of characters who are all really really good on their own. I think the author did a really good job at in like a short book showcasing each character and giving them a spotlight um, and making them really interesting and fun and oftentimes nasty. It was giving me a lot of anxiety reading it though when the girls are being mean to another girl they are being mean like it do they don't hold back and I was getting worked up about it and I was reading this on holiday in Cyprus with my family so they were all like chilling having fun in the pool and then I was just sitting there reading this book seething <laughs> like getting so angry. That being said it was really fun and it's a testament to the writing that I was getting quite emotionally invested. It was really funny and sweet as well and I think one of my favourite sections of the book was when the main character is exchanging letters with the love interest um, and they were just making me, it felt like I was exchanging letters with my main love interest. It was it was giving me all the feels, I loved it. Overall it was just a really fun read. I liked the climax of it. It got really dramatic, um, but I loved how each character's plot line wrapped up at the end. It made me happy. I was satisfied. And I really want to read other Let's Croucher. I think she also wrote Infamous, which I really want to read. And then the last book I'm going to talk about, which I read quite recently, um, is Yellow Face by RF Kuang. I listened to this on Audible when I was on a car journey moving to my new house and it was a really good read um, to do in the car. It was very gripping and it got me wrapped up in that world. Um, it did make me quite anxious reading it which isn't maybe the best thing to be when driving but I was enjoying myself. This book follows the character of June Hayward um, and her friend slash peer Athena Liu. They're both writers but June is significantly way less successful than Athena is. The novel starts with Athena dying isn't a spoiler, it starts right, it's like right at the beginning, but it follows Jun, who when Athena dies decides that she is going to take Athena's first draft of an unpublished novel that she was working on, rework it, finish it, and then publish it under a very racially ambiguous pseudonym, um, Juniper Song. And the novel then kind of follows like her overnight success with this novel as well as the eventual fallout of the decisions she's made throughout the book. It was really really good. I like I said I read Babel last year and I loved it. I still think I loved Babel more than this book but they're vastly different like Babel's a dark academia fantasy and this is like literary fiction really. But what I thought was really interesting is I don't read many books where the narrator is so unlikable um, and June is so unlikable and she's meant to be. She is constantly making questionable choices, saying racist things and one of the things that was really upsetting is a lot of the time it feels like she's addressing you as the reader and kind of making you an accomplice in her decisions. She'll be like, She'll do something horrible and then go on this big rant and be like, listen, you would have done the same thing. Or she says something racist and she was like, you were all thinking it too. And that makes you like really uncomfortable listening to this just 
horrible woman try and increasingly defend her actions and the other thing is it really good at showcasing the publishing world and how insipid it can be how on the other side of publishing a lot of the time a narrative is constructed based on what the book's about who the author is how best it's going to be sold to people they it's like a story within itself that these people create in order to sell this novel um which i thought was really interesting i really want to read the poppy war books soon they're just so big that i keep putting it off um but i'm thinking i might read them this year and i'm really excited too because i've only read two of her R.F. Klang's books so far but I love them both so I only have high hopes for it. And that's it. That's the best books that I've read this year so far. I hope this video was enjoyable and not too all over the place. It's my first go. If you've stumbled upon this video please <laughs> Please don't judge too harshly. <laughs> um, I hope you liked it if you stayed till the end. I don't know what this channel is going to be um, but I think I'm just going to do things that I like, talk about things that I like. Um, yeah so maybe I'll see you in the next one. <laughs> Thanks for watching, bye!